Hey, come see us on tour. We're going to be in Chicago, Grand Rapids, Duluth, Georgia, right outside of Atlanta, and Jacksonville, Florida. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for tickets. I just want to show you this. Uh, Kamala Harris's ex-advisor and spokesperson, Simone Sanders, just said her experience working for Kamala wasn't good. <laughs> Can you look up, where else is Simone? Simone Sanders, is that the Simone Sanders that worked for Bernie Sanders? That's what I thought. And then worked for Joe Biden, right? Yes, but I'll look that up right now. So here's what she says about working for Kamala Harris. Watch this. My experience had been, you know, it was it was new for me when I worked for her because I had never worked for a high profile woman before. I had only ever worked for men. Mm. And I after I, there was one day at work where I was like, ma'am, you might be the last woman I work for. Cause this is a, <laughs> There's this, a story there. It's a, it's a lot. This a, is a lot that, that we got to deal with over in here. <laughs> My experience had been. Did you, you hear know, it that? Was so the subtitle of this, the, 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 the Chiron I have up, if you can see this, says. My experience racist, had been. Sexist you know, it was, attacks it was new for on me Kamala Harris I ramp up. For a <laughs> and they have a female black woman. That's redundant. They have a black woman. Saying. It was a nightmare to work for Kamala Harris. <laughs> and that she don't think she's ever going to want to do that again. Work for a woman. That's what I heard her say. Let's hear, let's hear what she says. Let's hear what she says. My experience had been, you know, it was, it was new for me when I worked for her because I had never worked for a high profile woman before. I had only ever worked for men. Mm. And I, after I, there was one day at work where I was like, ma'am, you might be the last woman I work for. This is a, <laughs> There's this, a story there. It's a, it's a lot. This a, is a lot that, that we got to deal with over here. That's a black woman saying she never wants to work for another woman. And they all giggle about it on MSNBC. Imagine if that was a guy saying that. Imagine if a guy said, I don't ever want to work working for a woman. Holy shit, it's horrible. Imagine that. Nobody even blinks an eye. This rewriting of Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris is a horrible sociopath. <laughs> She's mean. She likes to inflict punishment on people. Do I need to show you the video of her giggling? about putting the parents of truant students in jail. She giggled about it. She is a psychopath. I, I don't, I'm not using that. Well, let's put it this. She is definitely a sociopath. She's horrible. And we just did a story about Venezuela. Believe me, she's going to do whatever they want her to do in Venezuela. If they overthrow it, she'll overthrow it. They want her to start a war with Iran, she'll start a war with Iran. They want us to keep they they want her to keep the war in Ukraine going for 10 years, she'll keep it going. They want her to start a war with Russia, she'll do it. Taiwan to for uh, with China, she'll do it. Do you know that Kamala Harris covered up exonerating evidence from a guy who was 4 hours away from being executed? Do you know that Kamala Harris went through a thousand people in jail because when they were getting drug tested, the drug lab would bring back false positives saying that, oh, they were doing drugs when they weren't. And she knew it and covered it up. And a thousand people got put in jail because of that. And she covered that up. She didn't expose it. She was ordered by a judge twice to release prisoners from California jails, and she didn't. And her office argued that the reason why they couldn't release those prisoners that the judge had ordered released, she said because it would, uh, her office said that it would uh, upset the prison labor system. So we got to keep people in jail for slavery. That's who Kamala Harris is. And you didn't even get to not vote for her. They just chose her and jammed her down your throat. And you're going to take it. The Democrats will take it. Democrats are taking it enthusiastically.
They're glad. Oh, they're glad that Joe Biden isn't the nominee anymore because he's demented. And now I guess it's okay to say that. We've been saying it here for four years. Okay, so Simone Sanders, she served as the national press secretary for Bernie Sanders in 2016 presidential campaign. She left the campaign abruptly in June 2016, saying she was not let go and that leaving the campaign was her decision. In October 2016, she was hired as a Democratic strategist and political commentator for CNN. And then in 2019... Uh, Sanders joined the 2020 presidential campaign of former Vice President Joe Biden as senior advisor. And after Biden won election, was named chief spokesperson and senior advisor for Vice President Kamala Harris. That's her background. Jimmy, I want to know why Simone Sanders was allowed to say this. Why, why is she allowed to say this on MSNBC? Does she not want to go to the parties? When did she say this? That's my question. So it's that so. It's got to be recent because Inside with Jen Psaki is a new show. This must have had to be recent. Why was she allowed to say this? Isn't that weird? I think that's called a gaffe. So it's a gaffe is when you accidentally tell the truth. And that's a gaffe. Uh, let's see what... Uh, Let's see what some people said underneath it. A few years ago, this was in Politico. Let's look. What, what was in Politico? Not a healthy environment. Kamala Harris' office rife with dissent. There's dysfunction inside the vice president's office, aides and administration officials say, and it's emanating from the top. People are thrown under the bus from the very top. There are short fuses and it's an abusive environment, said another person with direct knowledge of how Harris's office is run. It's not a healthy environment and people often feel mistreated. It's not a place where people feel supported, but a place where people feel treated like shit. And then it's so bad that this woman says this on, she says this on MSNBC. This is wild. My experience had been, you know, it was it was new for me when I worked for her because I had never worked for a high profile woman before. I had only ever worked for men. Mm. And I after I, there was one day at work where I was like, ma'am, you might be the last woman I work for. Cause this is a, <laughs> There's this, a story there. It's a, it's a lot. This a, <laughs> this. A so this guy says it means the deep state is laying the groundwork to see if they can replace Harris. Guy with a supposed great bullshit detector who's posting seven-year-old videos of Trump claiming he's giving Israel the gold <laughs> That guy's busting my balls. Good for you, TK. I don't... Do you think that's what it is? I don't think that's what this is. I think they're all... The establishment is all in on Harris. Who are they going to replace her with? Gavin the hair Newsom? How are you going to replace a black woman of sound... Of sound mind. In the Democratic Party? In the Good Democratic Party, right? You have to, the only thing you do is replace her with another black woman. Oh, Michelle Obama. Uh, have you seen this parody? This is funny. This is, uh, <laughs> this guy, her hair is certainly sexist. <laughs> she means this woman's hair. <laughs> That's funny. Have you seen? Uh, so anyway, that's a big deal. That Simone Sanders said that. How is that? that, that that's got to go right into a Trump campaign ad. Uh, and I don't believe. Do you believe these polls that are saying? Oh, boy. That she's narrowing the gap on Trump. And do you believe those polls? I don't believe the polls. Do you believe those polls, Misha? I don't believe those polls at all. She was the most unpopular candidate in the 2020 primary. She was. She, was. she got 1% of the black vote. Elizabeth Warren got 8%. Bernie Sanders got 16% of the black vote. Kamala Harris, 1%. So Malcolm uh, found that I looked into the story and she's complaining about hate, racism, misogyny that comes with working for black women. She's not complaining about Kamala Harris as a boss. 
Hmm. What? Yeah, I don't quite oh, understand. Oh, that's what she's saying? Oh, okay. So she's saying that she took too much hate and racism because she was working for Kamala Harris? But it didn't come from Kamala Harris. That's what they're saying that she's saying? I don't know. I have to see the full interview. I think that's really what... Okay. Let me play, play this play again. again. Let me play this again. My experience had been, you know, it was it was new for me when I worked for her because I had never worked for a high profile woman before. I had only ever worked for men. Mm. And I after I, there was one day at work where I was like, ma'am, you might be the last woman I work for. This is a, <laughs> there this, is a story there. It's a, it's a lot. This a, is this a lot that, that we got to deal with over in here. Oh, so so she's saying it wasn't coming from Kamala Harris. My experience had been, you know, it was. It She's saying that when you work for a high profile woman, you take a lot of race, a lot of sexist attacks. That's what she's saying. Oh, that's what she's saying. OK. That's why she was allowed to say that. OK. So that's because that's what she's saying. OK, well, good work, Malcolm. I'm figuring that out. Wait, wait, here's another. Here's uh, Simone Sanders, who resigned from Kamala Harris's staff, gives a very tepid endorsement of Kamala Harris on Morning Joe. Let's let's hear what she has to say. Let's just see what this is. The Republican reaction to this, and I've been sort of following and digging into it through contacts I have, I have and it is very real. Um, it is a hate campaign against who they call Kamala Harris, um, and they are freaking out, melting down. I can't think of the other words, but you see this very strong reaction, which shows that something has moved the meter, and perhaps Donald Trump himself may not be happy about the concept of Kamala Harris. Um, I've been watching all night long videos of her in Senate hearings, grilling uh, former Attorney General Bill Barr, um, Supreme Court nominees. And man, can she prosecute? Can she grill Republicans? Can she uh, drive the point home um, when she's in that mode? So I guess my question to you is, what do you think? Will she get the support? Will she get the delegate delegates? And can she prosecute the case against Donald Trump? Hey, Mika, the, the grilling, the former staff, we, we like to use, refer to it as uh, putting her on the putting someone on the witness stand. She she knows how to do that quite well <laughs> from her her previous life as a prosecutor. Um, I b before we talk about the vice president, I've also had the privilege to work for the president. I worked on his last campaign. Um, I was a deputy assistant to the president in the White House, in addition to serving the vice president. And Joe Biden is a remarkable man. He is selfless. And frankly, what he did yesterday, very yes. few elected officials in this country would be willing to do. Um, uh, and just the way in which it was handled. I, Joe Biden is a better person than me. Let me just say that. Oh, OK. Well, well that's well, not saying that's much. not really. Yeah. <laughs> She's they're pretending that Joe Biden stepped down from being the nominee on his own volition that he did for the be betterment of the country. He did it because he was forced out. Oh, oh, oh like it was a coup. Yeah, they, they did it to him. This so they're, again, she's a. They're all sociopaths. Over ninety percent of the vice president's staff left in the last three years. So, I'm still I'm, I'm keeping this segment. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, vice President Kamala Harris looks on as she visits the reading token. So we'll see. That's from the National Review. Harris personnel problem, over 90%. For... Not a ring endorsement. It backs up everything we have been hearing. A 95%, those 90% turnover rate is a dangerous sign of a toxic work environment. It's a 90%. I, don't, I think we we'll think it was 95, right? Didn't we, just, didn't we just see it was 90? 90. Hey, guess what? You know Rumble has their coffee. It's called 1775 Coffee. And, uh, you know, if you buy their coffee, it goes to help uh, support Rumble, which is supporting free speech. That's the important thing. You don't want to get coffee from a giant corporation. Have a cup of coffee filled with Rumble's very own freedom fighting, best tasting 1775 coffee. Try Rumble's 1775 coffee on a subscription and it'll save 40% off your first bag today. Wow.
Support freedom of speech and build a parallel economy that actually values you. Go to 1775coffee.com slash door. That's D-O-R-E. 1775coffee.com slash door right now and pick up your first bag. Use the code door. That's D-O-R-E to save 40% off your first subscription order. Hey, come see us on tour. We're going to be in Chicago, Grand Rapids, Duluth, Georgia, right outside of Atlanta, and Jacksonville, Florida. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for tickets. (laughs) 